Let's start this lesson by reminding ourselves of the properties of the Lambert's conformal conic projection to give it its full name. We shall look briefly at scale. You will remember that Lambert altered the basic perspective conic projection in order to reduce the scale distortion. So is it a constant scale chart or not? But our main concern will be with convergence and how chart convergence differs from earth convergence. As we said earlier, you are not required to calculate Lambert scale changes in the same way that we did with Mercator's chart. However, what do we mean by constant scale? It is a loose term, but generally, if the scale is within 1% of the correct scale, we regard it as constant. It means that you can use a ruler to measure distances. There is no requirement for dividers. The scale error depends on the change of latitude between the standard parallels. There is an equation to work this out, but you are not required to know it. However, we have calculated some values here, and we are going to put them into this table. We'll start with a value of 5 and a third degrees between the northern and the southern standard parallels. If the chart is constructed according to the 1 6th rule, 5 and 1 3rd degrees between the standard parallels gives us a maximum scale distortion, even at the worst point of only 1 tenth of 1%. Why have we chosen a figure of 5 and a third degrees? Does it have some special significance? As a matter of fact, it does. It is the separation between the parallels of 54 degrees and 40 minutes north and 49 degrees and 20 minutes north. These are the ones used for the CAA UK half million topographical series. So, if you were to measure a distance of 100 nautical miles on this chart at any point using a standard half million ruler, you will be within one tenth of a mile of the correct figure. So if we now look at a chart with 16 degrees between the two standard parallels, the worst case scale expansion or contraction increases to 1%, the limit of what we would call constant scale. Remembering our 1 6th rule again, if we have 16 degrees between the standard parallels, how many degrees are there between the top and bottom edges of the chart? The answer is 24 degrees. This means that the bottom edge of the chart could be in North Africa at 36 north, and we could fly all the way up to the north of Scotland at 60 north, all on a constant scale chart. Once we get to a larger separation of latitude between the standard parallels, the scale distortion increases. 28 degrees between the standard parallels also has a significance for us. The Jeppesen series, which includes the ED6, uses standard parallels of 37 north and 65 north. They use these for the whole of Europe. But the ED6, which is centred around 48 north, is right in the middle of the two standard parallels. And with 3% scale contraction, a scale on the standard parallels of 1 to 500,000 is contracted to 1 to 515,000 on this sheet. So, a Lambert's chart is constant scale for applications with a small change between the standard parallels but not for smaller scale charts where there is a larger change of latitude. We are now going to look at the difference between earth convergence and chart convergence. Earth convergence, otherwise known as convergency, 
is the difference in the inclination between two different meridians on the Earth. Or the change in a great circle track between two meridians on the Earth. Chart convergence is the difference in the inclination between two meridians on the chart. Or the change in a straight line track between two meridians on the chart. Note that for chart convergence, we are considering the change in a straight line. But for Earth convergence, it is the change in a great circle track. The two are only the same thing at the parallel of origin. Here is a worked example using this idea. A straight line on a Lambert's chart crosses the 12 degrees east meridian at A, which is 40 north, on a track angle of 292 degrees. It crosses another meridian at B, further west, on a track angle of 283 degrees. The sign of the parallel of origin is 0 0.6. What is the longitude of B? Once we've got the diagram, write the equation down. Chart convergence equals change of longitude times sine parallel of origin. We know the chart convergence. The track changes from 292 degrees to 283 degrees. That's a change of 9 degrees. And the question has told us that little n is 0 0.6. So the change of longitude is 9 divided by 0 0.6. This is 15 degrees. So if A was at 12 east and B is 15 degrees further west, it must be at 003 degrees west. What about conversion angle? The difference between a rum line and a great circle on the Earth is called conversion angle and has the value of half the convergency. The equation is that conversion angle equals half change of longitude times sine mean latitude. However, on a chart, the difference between a rum line and a straight line track is not called conversion angle but it does have the value of half chart convergence. Its equation is that half chart convergence equals half change of longitude times sine of the parallel of origin. Here is an ATPL exam question based on this idea. On a Lambert's chart, the constant of the cone is 0 0.8. A is at 53 north, 4 west. You plan to fly to B. The initial Lambert straight line track is 070 true and the rum line track from A to B is 082 degrees true. What is the longitude of B? You treat these types of problem exactly as you would a conversion angle problem on the Earth except that because it's a Lambert's chart you are considering the straight line, not the great circle. If the straight line track is 070 and the rum line track is 082, then the angle between them is 12 degrees. This is half the chart convergence. Our equation is that half chart convergence equals half change of longitude times sine of the parallel of origin. The question tells us that the constant of the cone is 0.8. This is another term for little n, or the sine of the parallel of origin. Rearrange the equation to make the change of longitude the subject. And the change of longitude works out at 30 degrees. So, if A is at 4 degrees west and B is 30 degrees east of it, B must be at 26 degrees east.